Imagine turning your 2D photo to 3D and creating a 2.5D animation in After Effects in just one minute. In this beginner tutorial video, I'll show you how to create 5 2.5D animation effects to change 2D to 3D with After Effects, Candal Kukam, and Kukam Studio. Even beginners can turn 2D to 3D with these 2.5D animation tricks and each effect takes only a minute to create if you know the shortcuts. The secret is Candal Kukam, a 360 camera that can automatically create a depth map. In less than a minute, you can create amazing 2.5D animations even if you've never used After Effects before. I'll also show you an easy KuCam Studio workflow for exporting Candal KuCam photos and videos for YouTube, Facebook, or any platform. Hi, my name is Mick and you're watching 360 Rumors, the resource that 360 shooters trust for in-depth camera reviews and innovative techniques. So I've been really excited to show you guys this video because I've been amazed at the things that I've been able to do so quickly and so easily. And just as a background, uh, I'm a photographer, not a visual effects guy. So um, I'm a beginner when it comes to um, After Effects. But even I could do uh, really cool animations like the ones you saw. Uh, it's a lot easier than it looks. The secret is that I use two shortcuts. Um, so first shortcut is an add-on for After Effects that makes it easy to use even for beginners and will uh, give you access to powerful effects right away. The second shortcut that I used is the camera which is the Candle Kukam and it creates a uh, depth map automatically. From After Effects I'm going to bring in uh, two files, the photo as well as the depth map. Um, I'm going to drag them into After Effects. So we're going to uh, create a composition which is kind of like the uh, canvas in, um, in After Effects. So it already created uh, by default the full HD at 30 FPS. It's okay. Now I'm going to drag the photo and the depth map into the composition. So over here. So we don't need to see the depth map. Uh, we're going to hide that. So over there. So um, just like uh, uh, Premiere you have an effects panel on the right side from the effects we're going to use an effect called displacement map displacement there you go so we're going to grab that and drag it onto the photo so we're going to drag it to this photo and um, just like Premiere again um, all the parameters are on the left side so uh, it's, it's asking you what's the displacement map layer where is it located so it's in it's uh, we're going to click it here we're going to point it to it and instead of using the RGB data we're going to use luminance so click luminance for both horizontal and uh, vertical displacement what can you do now that there's a displacement map effect watch this so check this out pretty cool huh it looks 3d uh, and you could do that vertically as well um, so that's how easy it is and you saw it just took a couple minutes to do it um, and that was with me, you know, talking the whole way uh, through. Now, as powerful as this is, um, you might be wondering, but how do you do other effects like the ones you saw at, at the beginning where I was like zooming in? That's a little more complicated, but there's a shortcut. So the shortcut is to use this software called Volumax. So imagine if you had a friend who was really good at After Effects and you asked him to set up this After Effects project where all you had to do was plug in the photos and move some sliders around and you'd be able to do these fancy effects. That's pretty much what Volumax is. I'm going to go file and open project and then we're going to open the Volumax template over here. So once you uh, open um, Volumax, then you bring in your photo just like what we did for After Effects. So I'm going to go here, so I'm going to drag those. Um, into After Effects and so this time the photo uh, I'm gonna drag it onto this composition called your picture so I'm gonna the depth map I'm gonna drag it onto this uh, composition called your displacement map so now once you've done that you can go down to the main uh, uh, composition and give it a couple seconds so maybe three seconds okay now you see this uh, square, that becomes your controller. So check this out. So look at the, as I move it around, you can 
um, alter both the X and Y axis at the same time. But that's not all. Um, volume Max can also let you do other really cool effects. So um, we're going to click on this uh, effect controls over here on the upper left side. And if you don't see that, uh, go to window and then uh, look for uh, this panel called effect controls. So anyway, from here, you can see a ton of effects that you can do. So I'm going to show you the parallax zoom effect. Um, I'm going to keyframe it. I'm going to click on keyframe and then drag this. And so parallax zoom can create a simulated dolly zoom. So yeah, uh, let's do it like that much, let's say. And we have to wait for it to render um, because it's a very processor intensive effect. So, and here it is. Check it out. Pretty cool, huh? And you saw how easily we were able to do that. There are other effects that you can do, uh, like this thing called um, dust. And I love this effect because it adds um, dust to your um, your composition. So that's important because the dust. Um, makes it look more 3D. Yeah. So I've increased to let's say 500 and so watch the effect. So you can see that there's like these dust particles and so it makes it look more 3D as we do our parallax zoom. So another cool thing you can do with Volumax is to create these um, 3D looking titles. So it has this um, uh, pre-made object. It's over here and it's actually just hidden. So I'm going to reveal it. And then you can change the text by double clicking on it. So just let's change, call it like six rumors. So once you have the text, you can go back to your controller. As you move it around with the um, selection tool, you can see that the the text is kind of 3D, just like the uh, photos. You can also change the distance. To do that, just select the effects panel, and then you can use the slider to control the depth. So we have time for one more uh, special effect that we can learn. It's the lens blur effect. If you're wondering why my hair looks shorter, that's just an optical illusion. It's nighttime. We have here the, the same uh, photo that we've been working on. Uh, so uh, when we click on volume math controller and, and click on effect controls, you'll see there's a control called uh, DOF strength and DOF focus point. So uh, all you have to do is adjust the slider um, and that shows you like the blurring effect. And you can control the focus point like you know whether it's focused near or far by dragging this slider. But this one has keyframes so you can animate this. So it moves back and then it becomes sharper. Just like the others, when you're done, just go to File, um, Export, and then add to Adobe Media Encoder Cube. So as you saw, it's really easy to use um, After Effects and Volume X. To create these uh, fancy animations, these 2D to 3D animations. The hardest part is really the depth map. Um, there are many tutorials for doing that um, and in fact Volumax has tools to help you paint your own depth map. But uh, in the end it still requires a significant time and actually skill to create a good depth map. Now if you want to save time um, the way you do, to do it is to use a camera that can create a depth map for you, like the Candle Cool Cam. So um, here's the Cool Cam, um, and the way it works is it converts to a uh, 3D 180 camera, um, and then uses the stereo disparity to generate a depth map. So I'm going to show you how to create a depth map with the Cool Cam. I'm going to launch Cool Cam Studio. Click on Editor then click on add. So uh, KuCam uh, creates uh, both 360 and 3D 180 photos and videos. First I'll show you the uh, workflow for a 360 photo. It's really simple. Uh, for 360 photo or video, 
um, you just have to select, uh, you can adjust the yaw, pitch, roll uh, to level the photo if it wasn't level. Um, and another thing you can do is uh, click on this 360 icon to view it in 360. So let's say it, it's not um, level enough for me, I can adjust the roll a bit, so now it's level. Um, uh, for videos, another option for 360 is to uh, use stabilization. So uh, this is how it looks without stabilization. And this is when I click on full stabilization, this is how it looks. So um, after you've uh, selected the, the stabilization type and you've uh, leveled the photo or uh, video, click on add the queue. Um, and then they're going to show up in this render tab and you can see the photo, the video here. For uh, 3D 180, there are many more options. So let me show you. For 3D 180 video, um, the options are you could change the projection. You could go from equirectangular uh, to cylindrical uh, per perspective, which is like rectilinear. Uh, and then fish fisheye. Now if, if you choose perspective view uh, or rectilinear view, you can also adjust the aspect ratio. And there's also like um, anti-shake stabilization, which is like it's going to partially stabilize the, the video for you. Now for 3D 180 photos, there are even more options because um, not only can you change the projection, uh, but you can also apply a refocus. So first thing that you want to do is to generate the depth map. So um, on the top left, you can click on depth and this forces it to generate a depth map. So check it out. Now we can go back to the normal view and then uh, we can apply the refocus effect. Clicking on that and on the left, this uh, you can click on this icon. Then you can click on whichever part of the photo you want to be in focus. So let's say we want that to be in focus. You can see the background got blurred right away. Now you can adjust the slider to adjust the uh, intensity of the the blur. So, but um, if you drag, so you can see how it changes which part is in focus. And when you're done, um, click on Add to Queue. And on the Render tab, you'll see there are many options for rendering the 3D 180. And you could choose, choose uh, mono or stereo. You could choose side by side or top bottom. Uh, and you could also choose the format, the resolution. Do you want a depth map when you render? Just so many options. And the question is, which one do you want to use? So, the, for VR 180, there's uh, no established uh, or dominant standard yet. Um, Google is trying to push the standard called uh, Google VR 180 and what that means is that when you're looking at a VR 180 video on YouTube it looks flat as if it's an ordinary um, video but when you wear a VR headset then it looks like it's in VR and 3D uh, in, in a 180 space so it's pretty cool. But there are many problems with VR 180. As of July or August uh, 2018, um, first of all, uh, it's very hard to edit. Uh, it, like for photos, for example, if you do a VR 180 photo and then you uh, post it on uh, Google Photos, you can't edit it. Uh, there's, there's no existing editor for it. If you want to edit it, you have to convert it first to some other format like side by side and then edit it and then convert it back to VR 180. So another issue with VR 180 when if you want to add a metadata for it for VR 180 uh, it's gonna be a problem because they created a metadata injector tool for Mac and Linux but not Windows. I, I have no idea why they left Windows out. It, it's like they, as if they wanted it to fail or something. There's a third problem with VR 180 is that um, it's not universally supported. You can only view it on, uh, on YouTube and on Google Photos. That's it. And if you want to view it on Google VR 180 photo or video on Facebook or Vimeo or, so, or Veer or some other website, it doesn't work. Um, and moreover, even if you put it on YouTube, 
you can only see it um, on Google Daydream headsets, cardboard, and recently uh, Samsung Gear VR because they just added YouTube, a native YouTube app. But if you have Oculus Go, you can't see the VR 180. There's so many disadvantages to VR 180 that I don't really recommend it as of um, August 2018. So having said all of that, if you still want to render your photo or video in Google VR 180, my friend Hugh Ho created this awesome tutorial for it. Check it out in the list. There's a link in the description. But um, the what the workflow that I use, um, I render it uh, in a format that's usable for Facebook, for YouTube, for Veer, for Vimeo, for anything, um, and you can watch it on any headset. Um, so. The way to do that is to render it in stereo and in um, top bottom format in 360. So um, you'll not only can you view it on any format, but you can also mix it with um, 360 videos that you already have, whether it's in mono or stereo. So that's why I prefer the, uh, rendering it this way. So I'm gonna output with depth and then just click on render all or render selected. So if you want to export your uh, 3D180 photo uh, for use with Volumax, then these are the settings you should use. Uh, first of all, for projection, choose perspective. And then for uh, aspect ratio, choose 16 by 9. Um, then go to the, uh, click on add to queue, and then go to the render tab. From here, choose mono. And, um, for format, uh, just leave it as JPEG. And for resolution, uh, choose a custom resolution um, and use uh, 4K 3840 by 2160. So um, that's not the native resolution of um, uh, CoolCam, but um, it's going to up res it and, uh, to the same resolution of, as Volumax to make it easier for you to edit your uh, photo. So uh, be sure to click on output with depth and click on render selected. And that's it, you're done. And here's that photo we just uh, rendered. Here's the photo and here's the depth map for it. And that's it. So you can just uh, drag that onto um, um, After Effects and uh, whether you want to use After Effects by itself or with Volumax. Watch for my full review of the amazing Kandalf Who Can. So thanks for watching and special shout out to um, the viewers and readers who've been watching my videos regularly. I love you guys, so I'll see you in 360.